Welcome back, everyone. Just kind of going over some stuff. Oh, yeah, I need to move my sweet smelling flowers back to my bear. Now, I don't need a lot of stuff. We can kind of wait to eat and drink until we get to the next area, probably. <clears throat> Although, I could do some easy stuff, like, you know, some of the stuff that's not worth selling, but not worth... Ooh. I don't know if I want to blow the can of tuna. That's pretty nice. Where's my pizza at? See, because it's like... The pizza plus moxie and mysticality, which, I mean, helps with my defense, if nothing else. I can also just chuck down a lot of hard attack and be invincible to physical attacks. Uh, what else I got? I got ranch dressing. Got the blood building tonic. I got that beer. That's probably not a bad way to go. This alcohol is kind of hard to come by from a good way. Goblin Chicory might not be a bad way to go. Because that's just minus one to my stats. Yeah, let's have some let's have some of that to wake up. Tastes pretty good, all things considered, but makes you feel jittery and nauseated. Cane chicory. Uh smelling salts is in combat. Let's have a hard tack. You eat the tack! You gain tack hard. That was hard. Let's have not the goblin mescal. Let's get rid of that. Uh, military grade whiskey, man. All it does is take care of our debuff. Oh, what was it? The chicory. Must have been spleen. Okay, I thought it would. Oh, I guess that wouldn't go to your liver. That's good to know. Got that dusty turnip. Cactus bits. Nah. Generally bad to eat cow stuff, because it's like, are you sure? I don't know about that. I, oh, we could have some thick, sturdy hot dogs. That's an idea. Let's eat one of them. It was a very big dog. Uh, We'll hang on to that ranch dressing, because that's pretty nice. Okay, where's where's our booze at? A root beer. That's, oh, that's mysticality. Don't need that. Snake venom bladder? Poison in combat. Sassapaparilla? That's moxie. Blah. I don't need any more speed. Where's my... Where's my cactus beer at? Can't I find it? Because I'm stupid, that's why. I have... Alphabetical? No, I don't want that. Oh god, I don't want... How do I want that? There it is. There's my cactus beer. I'll have one of them. Chug the cold, refreshing cactus beer. You gain effect cactus drunk. All right, cool. We're good. I think we're ready to move on. Let's uh, put our floral ring back on. So we're pretty, and we get more foraging encounters. We yelled at ourselves. We're ready to go. Um, I want to do something before I check the mail. Oh! <clears throat> we should go check the shaggy dog cave. Encounter? Well, I think we're kind of out of random encounters here. Already got that beer. Shame. <sighs> Some fellow was real into plaques. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall. A record of events of the expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887. As recorded by Jim Plackwright. Fascinating. There's a plaque bolted to the wall. Having acquired through various and sundry means a story which is interesting in its own right, but better saved for another time, a map purporting to lead to a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals, hidden by the infamous highwayman and train robber Black Cole Jr. in the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Blackwright, along with three compatriots, these being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy dog cave and the aforementioned treasure. Treasure, you say? The plaque. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, and a mining pick, a large coil of rope, one large basket of eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of blank plaques and engraving tools, one large and shaggy dog, and a butt for.
black hole through the wall. After traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived at a small town named Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon and each ordered a beer, except Sai, who was satisfied with water. I... I... I have questions. We can... We can... We can danked around a little bit. The barman provided our drinks as requested and then withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar, asking us if we'd care to witness something real interesting. Considering that we still had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he had never been there personally, but gave us rough directions, which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. We'll have to ask the bartender. It's black. Of course there is. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Fortunately, the only supplies missing were the butt four and the entire basket of eggs. Apart from one that Doug had concealed with a pocket for safekeeping, we also discovered that the dog had absconded with one of the horses, forcing Nate and Sai, after drawing of lots, to share. <sighs> after acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement butt for, we headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly upon us, although we took some small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made the expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass time on the trip and resist becoming dazed from the heat and susceptible to desert mirages, we exchanged stories of our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of length. Thank God. And the treasure. However, I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek through the desert. The first was two or three hours out of dirt water, where Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metallic object partially buried in the sand. This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in the wagon with our other tools. Great. Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribesman who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired as to our destination, and we replied we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, though we did not disclose the reason for our journey. The goblin confirmed that we were heading on the correct course and mentioned that he had only a short time earlier witnessed a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed, and continued on our way. Some time later, we encountered a large adobe hut occupied by two identical-seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gratefully accepted, and introduced themselves as hermits. This struck me as peculiar, given that there were two of them, but I felt it would be rude to question them on that point. Fast and... <clears throat> One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that what his brother said was true. They also commented that they had seen a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for our butt for, and we continued on our way, excited to finally be nearing our goal. The music is entirely too dramatic for this. After two more hours, we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave. Carefully keeping our excitement in check, lest we become incautious, we unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon and took a brief respite in the cool shade of the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Dave unpocketed and shared the egg he had saved from our basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. A and... Oh, almost missed that one. <sighs> Discovering that we had neglected to patch, 
pack torches, lanterns, or any other light source with which to illuminate the cave, we declared that it was indeed fortuitous that Nate had discovered that antique oil lamp during our travels. He gave the brass a quick shine and lit the wick, and we were relieved to discover that it lit easily and provided a very adequate amount of light. Neat. As we headed into the cave, we were further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse, and there were no side passages which might cause us to become lost. Despite this, I resolved to hang a number of plaques to mark our progress through the cave and engrave them with the tale of our journey such that others who discovered the cave after us might be entertained and edified by our story. <sighs> Job done. Soon we came to the end of the tunnel. While Nate, Sai, and Doug took turns with the excavation, I completed the last of the aforementioned plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Sai's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise, and we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. It's a hole. A completely empty hole. The chest was locked with an ancient and rusting iron padlock, which broke easily from a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly, and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brilliantly upon jewels of every color and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised by the legends of Black Cole Jr. Joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest into our wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading, and may your own endeavors be equally successful. Signed, Jim Plackwright. Expected. Let's 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 go talk to Smee. Oh, as you're heading down the dusty desert trail, you sense an extremely powerful, extremely malicious cow presence nearby. You track its source to a nearby ranch. Oh, wow, that's right by the camp. We should probably check that out. Hi, Tim. We got a needle. Oh. You lack the proper leatherworking expertise to use these tools. Bookshelf is mostly burned. You find a single mostly unburnt book. You got the burned leatherworking manual. This manual is both burned ab and about working with burned leathers. Teaches you how to make things out of inter infernal cowhide. Okay, this is our secondary skill. The uh, snake oiler finds an old snake oiler's cart that lets him make different potions and tonics out of all the snake bits he gets. Some of them are stupid. Like a bullet that does your max bullet damage to every target on the battlefield, except, well, every enemy. And like a potion that gives you, like, plus 50 hit points, or makes you immune to all status effects. His is pretty busted. I don't know about leatherworking. The Bean Wizard gets, uh, cookery, and he can make really, really powerful food. I didn't get to play with that one too much. So, read the book from charred leather cover to large charred leather cover, and we got leatherworkery. Your understanding of occult cow anatomy allows you to make seriously enchanted leather goods. Enchanted leather goods out of thick leather. And we got some extra. After you're done reading it, you understand that the book itself is bound in valuable leather. You tear it apart so you can make something else from it. <laughs> so we got four. We haven't fought very many cows, honestly. The bench is fully stocked with sanctified leatherworking tools. Blessed owls, hollowed punches, holy soaked water soaked thread, that kind of thing. Make something. Ooh. Nail gloves. A bag for more meat. Three stomp damage. We don't have stomp. Five muscle and three armor pants. That's pretty badass. A hat for five muscle and three lassos. What are my pants doing right now? Armor and speed. I mean, just flat muscle boost. A plus five muscle hat. How much? See, I want to know how much leather it takes up, though. I kind of want to try some lassos, just in case. Do I have gloves? What are... Is it a ring? I mean... Because I got the goblin ring, which is pretty good. I assume it's a ring. I mean, minus four moxie is a shame, but six muscles hard to beat. Is it also just... Plus, yeah, plus... Uh, 
curious about that. Well, let's try the bag, the hat, the pants, and the lassos. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can level this up. Yeah. Smoldering leather. Oh, okay, so we need to get smoldering leather first. Okay, so that we, we won't lose anything by using these. Maybe. <laughs> let's make the hat. A thick leather hat. You made this hat, and you made it thick. Okay, let's make our lassos. Uh, you think about... Okay, thick leather rope. You braided a bunch of leather strands together into an extremely thick rope and then accidentally tied it into a lasso. Disables for three rounds. That's pretty sick. Uh, let's do the pants. Thick leather pants. These pants are thick even for leather pants. How'd that cow even walk with skin that thick? Cow looking like refrigerated peanut butter. This is more meat. Thick leather bag. This bag pulses its maw, gnashing and yearning for flesh. Oh, it goes in your offhand. That's a shame. Okay. Well, let's put on our hat and our pants. And we lose a bunch of speed. That's a shame. We lose damage if we put our plush bear, but more meat. Although we don't really need the meat right this second. Oh, I remembered another thing we can do. We'll need to level up this hat, or silver plate it. Whoa, what the heck is that? Oh my god, that's it. It's gotta be. Gotta be what? That's where the cows came home from. How do you know? I just... know. Look at this place. Look at that damn thing. It's like someone went and tore a hole in nothing. What the hell else could it be? Guess we better check it out. Are you a thing? Hager's agave. Agave nectar. Okay. Nectar of Hagar's agave, agave oide cabus wavis, <laughs> is highly prized by lazy drunks due to the fact it doesn't require any processing in order to make liquor out of it. Seven moxie. Not bad. <gasps> the only part of the shed didn't burn down was the part this horseshoe was attached to. Guess it really is good luck. Lucky horseshoe. Don't turn it upside down or all the luck will fall out, because luck is apparently a fluid that only exists in two dimensions. Plus X pistol damage. That's pretty sick. It's a portal to hell, and you hear ominous mooing. Bringing this will attract the attention of at least one infernal cow. Well, I get smoldering leather from them. I still have silver shears, though, so they're fucked. Not a lot they can do until there's a whole bunch of them. You pulled some cows from their home dimension and mercilessly slaughtered them, you monster. <laughs> Just kidding, they're super evil. Susie got another notch. Yeah, let's, let's see how entertaining this gets. Hey, that's a regular cow. A hell cow. And one shot it. Gore is level two. We got tainted beef steak. You prep your skinning knife, but all the useful hide bursts into flame and withers away before you get a chance to collect anything. Huh. That's it. That's an odd thing. I was hoping I'd be able to do something with that. Um, what are we leveling up now? It doesn't matter. I want to level up leather working. Because I like to get those maxed out. Uh, yeah, it's cheap. It'll be like 100, 300. And we'll get a lot more experience in this area. Okay, so... Let's whack it. Let's have Susie shoot it. Maybe it was my silver shears. It probably wasn't, but just just to look at it. Yeah, I'll have to figure out how to get hide from them. Huh. How much XP we get from that? 69. Well, one more we can upgrade our leather working. Oh, maybe if my leather working goes up, I can get better stuff. Let's try that experiment. Future cow bile. Nice. Okay. Uh, leather working. Now let's see if we can get some goodies out of them. Ooh, two of them now. I'll take you out. Now why don't you lasso that one. And then I'll whack that one. I 
I did not get anything out of it. I got a shitload of experience out of it. Eh. Something hot requires smoldering leather. Interesting. Eh. Let's, uh, 300? Yeah, that's easy. Let's, let's mosey. I needed to do something over here. What the hell was it? Not the circus, not the lazy ranch. Ah, silver plate. I need to plate my hat. That's crazy. I expected to find something. Howdy! Well, I'd like my hat plated. What else can you plate? What are my options? I don't really care about the piston. Looks through your pack and mouth. Mmm, a turnip! That sounds like an interesting challenge. Well, for 5,000 meat, it has to be good. Plate the turnip! He takes the turnip and gives it back a short time later, shiny and gleaming. Had a hollow out the middle so it wouldn't rot inside, but you can wear it as a hat now. Turnip crown. It was a strange choice to silver plate this, but it's definitely one of the four shiniest turnips you've ever seen, and it's balanced such you can wear it on your head. All hail the monarch of turnips. Neat. There you go. It looks like a little wiener. <laughs> How many snake bands? I think I used them all. Uh, and sold the other ones. Eh, shit. I need some snakes to make a snake band out of. Well, hell. Well, let's go down to dirt water. Let's go check our mail. Overturn stage coach. That's easy. You flip it up. Nobody's around, but at least it's not an eyesore anymore. Ah, piddle farts. How you doing, Bill? Bill? Didn't expect to see you around these parts. Well, I gotta admit, I got a little envious when I saw you leave Boring Springs. I figured I'd hitch a ride out west, see what I could see. And just look at this place. So much hustle. So much bustle. There sure is a lot of both of those. Hey, nice pot. Thank you kindly. So what's new? Well, to be honest, what's new is a profound sense of longing and loneliness. Sorry to hear that, Bill. Well, it is what it is. I was hoping I'd run across a similarly lonely cactus lady somewhere out here. Failing that, a normal human lady looking to marry a cactus. No luck? Not yet. Of course, getting around's a bit of a challenge, but those cactuses live a long time. I'm sure I'll meet somebody. Someday. I'll keep an eye out. Well, heck, I sure would appreciate that. Good lord. Got any mail? Got a package from Rufus. What do we get? A portable leather working bench. That's why I didn't come check the mail immediately. We're out of postcards. Oh, uh, I don't need any more hot dugs. <laughs> Brother, you don't want to know what it is. Let's see if Mr. Top Hat has anything new. He's got some nails. No, not really. Damn. I don't think I have any oil. Let me buy some just to be thorough. Uh, oh yeah, let's go set that up in our room. Ah, I got stuck. I could also try this DLC at some point, but I'll, let's let's do some of this middle area first. We need some more vibrato chips. We might just wander around. Oh shit! I didn't mean to sleep. Piss. Dream you're having an argument with a giant squid on a deserted island, but you meet someone who looks exactly like Tim, but isn't. You jolt awake in panic. I meant to set up my leather working bench. It's fine. Install it next to the window. Well, piss. Uh, we still got plenty of food, though. Uh, we got cactus beer. We were on that. Uh, where's my hot dogs at? Jumbo hot dog. And Hard tack? Mm, what do I want for potions? Agave nectar. Eh. Oh yeah, chicory. For that extra speed. Okay. Let's roll with that. Okay, then let's... 
Yeah, I need a few more vibrato things. Let's see if we can get to the camp this time. Oh, off the side of the trail, you spot one of those weird cactuses that produce cans of sealed tuna fish as fruit. What a world. Can of tuna. Ooh. Can of tuna. Handy. What's that foraging ring paying for itself? Ow. Must have sleepwalked here. Guy stopped messing with his watch and started eating jelly beans? What you got there, jelly beans? Uh, yep. Can I have one? Nope. Please? No, get your own. Well, I never. Please? Where'd you get them? Little way south here from a fella named Roy Bean. My god, that's a big spider. Now, so far he hasn't violated the NAP. As long as he stays the hell on that side of the room. I don't know if it's a wolf spider or just a big lady house spider. Huh. Curious. I'd go take a picture for the Discord, but it's kind of brown on my mottled gray carpet. It's still whistling to the beat of the band. Can't go too far in that direction. You'll fall off the edge of this giant cliff. Well, shit. Howdy, boss. Howdy, me. Stuck again? Yep. Got ourselves one hell of a canyon to get across. No materials for bridge building. Any ideas? An old mine town up north called Breadwood. They opened a lumber camp after the mines dried up. If you can fix a deal with them for the lumber we need, I can handle the engineering side of things. Where is it? Of course. Anything you can find to build the bridge out of is fine by me, but that seems like the simplest option. There are a couple different things you can do with this. Uh, if you do all the necromancer stuff, you can actually make a necromancy bridge, which is a thing. I for and some of the other options we haven't really gotten into yet. It's one of those pay telescopes for tourists. This one was designed by a promising young artist named Edvard Munch. Shh, take a telescope. Look through the telescope at the big canyon. Sure is big! Take quite a bridge to get across that thing, that's for sure. Uh, yup. So we know where Breadwood is, and we know where Roy Bean's house is. Well, I know we need to go down to Roy Bean's house. You see what you take to be an oasis in the boiling heat of this region and spur Tim towards it. As you near it, you discover you've been fooled. It wasn't an oasis at all, but an evil, towering, black stone cow monolith. Anybody could make that mistake, really. Let's kick its ass! Oh my. It's 93 hit points and it's dead. Okay. An ungulate horn. It's not sharp, but it's still dangerous. <gasps> Cow hate flashes in her eyes. Susie has become stronger. Sweet. Oh. What's up, Susie? Oh, she found a ranch. What's new, Susie? I heard about a ranch in this area, what might be notable. How do you mean? It one that weren't never attacked by the cows. Huh. That might be worth investigating. Kellogg Ranch. Yeah. Forgetting anything? Thanks. Roy Bean's House of Justice and Jelly Beans. And a turlet. What's this even hooked up to? We got the Master of Flushing. Plus three muscle. Your toilet flushing mus flush muscles are in fantastic shape. And uh, Roy must be, prefer to perform his morning ablutions outdoors. Let's perform some of our own and gussy up a bit. XP? 169? Nope. A little bit more for leather working. <laughs> Jelly beans alright, I suppose. Dull, though. I ain't a patch on Ma's cinnamon rock candy. Ooh, hot cinnamon. Eye water. And in charge, you could cut yourself on. Ma figured if he was gonna eat pure sugar, we ought to at least have to put up a fight. You see what I see? I see it. We'll end on that. What's this? There's a single yellow jelly bean in this case with a sign that says Paraguayan Murder Bee Honey Jelly Bean. Very rare. Quote Mr. Dink. Very expensive. 6,000 meat. What kind of lunatic? Pay 6,000 meat for a single jelly bean. Not this kind, that's for sure. Yeah. Got a bed. Got a dresser. A lack of jelly beans is not for sale. Howdy there, Pilgrim! Name's Roy Bean! Howdy, Roy. I'm dead man walking. 
What do you do here? Well, when I first came to these parts, I was all about two things. Dispensing justice and dispensing jelly beans. I was the biggest name in bounty hunting and candy selling anyone ever heard of. Gosh, what happened? Oh, nothing particularly tragic. Got old, so I hung out my pistol for good. Points at the wall. He's pointing at an empty hook on the wall over a spittoon. I still sell some jelly beans from time to time, but they're out of fashion. This old place is just a jelly bean museum now. Seems like the sign out front ain't very accurate then. How do you mean? Well, if you aren't dispensing justice anymore, maybe it should just say museum. Huh. I guess you got a point. For a jelly bean museum, I sure don't see very many jelly beans. Huh. Bunch of crooks and shady characters come and stole them all. All three jars. Suppose they think I'm a soft target now that I'm retired. Oh, that sucks. Well, good luck. <laughs> I'll help you get them back. Well, now, I certainly appreciate your assistance. I can't offer much in the way of a roar, but I can tell you which way the first group of thieves went. You hopping out in that direction? Hey, I'll go get them. First, we're going to look for this gun in this spittoon. That's a clue. It's a spittoon. There's nothing special about it. Ho, ho, ho. I'll be the judge of that. As soon as you get near the spittoon, you can smell the overpoweringly sweet stench it exudes. Nauseatingly sweet, like the rotting corpse of a dead gummy bear. Look at it. Garish rainbow colors swirl together in congealing psychedelic madness. Is Roy using jelly beans as chewing tobacco? Yes. Yes, of course he is. Investigate further. We're talking about a bowl of jelly beans that have been sucked on, half chewed, and then spat into a brass bucket. Do you seriously want to put your hand in that swill of artificial coloring and thickened saliva? It'll probably never be clean again. You're damn right I do. Look, I'm serious. You're about to permanently dye your hand with a swirling mismatch of all the worst colors in the spectrum. No one will ever have a tattoo that looks as gross or as stupid. Give it to me. I feel like Nicolas Cage in that college humor bit about uh, he, he won't say no to a role. You got a perk spittoon hand. Oh, sorry. Well, I tried. Don't ever say I didn't warn you. You plunge your hand into the spittoon and fish around for a while. Eventually, you pull out a really disgusting pistol and a really disgusting hand to shoot it with. Yay. Spittoon hand. Your hand has been permanently stained by the rainbow-colored contents of the nasty spittoon. On the bright side, the hand will never suffer anything worse than that ever again. We get a bunch of resistance. And a befouled pistol. It'll probably make a pew sound when you shoot it. Deal stench damage to the physical, does a shitload of damage, and gives you a lot of moxie, which means you do more damage. So we could go pistol. Like, we've got enough weird things to make our pistol damage go up. But we're not gonna, because we're just gonna keep whacking people with these shears. Anyway, I think that's it for this one. We're gonna head to, uh... uh well, the Jelly Bean Thief hideout, that's... I mean, they probably should have picked a different name for it, honestly. That's just... I mean, I'm not a criminal thinker. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it's... It, it lacks je ne sais quoi. Anyway, next time, I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow.